You know, when I was in third grade, I was a timid, quiet student, sat in the back of the class, didn't attract much attention. I barely passed third grade. And Miss Kennedy, my teacher, was very gracious. She spoke to my parents and said, you know, he may have a little potential. At the end of the year, she said, you've got 75 days in the summer. Why don't you focus on having him learn his multiplication tables? So sure enough, the first day of summer, my parents made me the chart for the multiplication tables and said, go at it. So that summer, I spent all my time carrying that chart around, learning what 7 times 7 was and 6 times 8 was, and just wrote, re reciting it and just understanding it to make sure I knew my multiplication tables. Because I knew that I didn't want to be embarrassed again of not knowing, of being the last kid in the class. So at the end of that summer, I came back to fourth grade and had Mr. Hill. He's a great teacher. Inspired me, got me focused. But he used to play this game inside his class. We'd put a, wor a number wheel up, and then we'd turn around. We'd compete against each other. And he'd put a number in the middle, and we had to turn around and compete against the other student and put up what the answer to all the multiplication answers were of the number he put in the middle. Lo and behold, I was winning every time. I was getting really good. I mean, multiplication tables, I was nailing it. And that led to a couple of interesting things. One, it increased my confidence, not only in math, but in all the other subjects that we were paying attention to in that class. It allowed me to pay attention and look forward to going to school, because I finally understood one of the most difficult subjects that we all sat through in school. And looking back at that, I realized that math can be learned. It's the most difficult foreign language we take on, but it can be learned. And moving on from there, living in Silicon Valley, I was fortunate to have a great career, working in consumer marketing at a few tech companies. The last tech company I was at was sold in about 2001. After it was sold, we all exited, we all left, and looking to find out what I was going to do next. And I visited a small trailer in the back of a school. This was in the most difficult neighborhood in the city of San Jose called Santee Elementary School. It was so bad that the judges made the landlords there, they were called slumlords, to live in the apartments they're renting out because they're rat infested. Yes, this is in Silicon Valley. It was that difficult of a neighborhood. And my friend who walked me around and said, we have this small nonprofit, it's got a $50,000 budget. We don't know if it's gonna make it, but you just left a job, it's 2001. The dot-com bust is happening as we speak. There's not much else going on anyways. Why don't you give this a shot for six months and see what happens? So in that small trailer in the back of a school, I started my journey in trying to impact education. As I went through that journey, naturally I turned to research. I looked for where is that silver bullet that can solve all the challenges in education. Fastly realizing there is no silver bullet. And you can find research to prove anything if you look hard enough. And in doing that, I try to figure out what is that one subject in school that if we impact in kindergarten to 12th grade education, that would have the greatest impact in that child's life. And I came across three pieces of research. One is called the Duncan study. Conventional wisdom will tell you that a kindergartner's kindergarten reading score predicts their third grade reading score. And a kindergarten's Kindergarten math score predicts their third grade math score. Pretty logical. This new study came out, and it said something astonishing. It said a kindergarten math score better predicts third grade reading and math score than a kindergarten reading score predicts third grade math scores, or third grade reading scores. It's astonishing. It turned everything on, on its head, saying starting with math that early in kindergarten, leads to so much predictability. That was one. 
The second piece of research that came out was called the forgotten middle. We as a society, our government, our philanthropists, our corporations, we spend a lot of money trying to make students go to college. We spend a lot of money in elementary school, and we spend a lot of money in high school. What this study said is we're doing it all wrong. Students actually make decisions about going to college in middle school, and that's where we spend the least amount of money. Interesting. The third piece of research was called Answers in the Toolbox, the Edelman study. This study looked at correlation. There's no real causation in education. But it looked at correlation. What has the highest correlation between kids graduating from college in five years, which, by the way, is only 17% of students these days, and what they did in high school? It looked at race. It looked at socioeconomics. It looked at everything. And what it found was the highest correlation between students who graduate from college in five years and what they did in high school was Algebra 2. Algebra 2 had the highest correlation. And it went on to show that if you went beyond Algebra 2 in high school, your odds of graduating in college in five years exponentially increased. So if you went, went on to stats or calculus or other courses, it exponentially increased your odds of graduating from college in five years. So those three pieces of research led me to think, if we want to prepare our students for college and careers, math is going to play a big role in that. The other thing we looked at is, when do you work with students? Our classroom days are filled. So we looked at this whole thing about the 10,000 hour rule. We need more time on task. And we saw summer. Summer is a really interesting time. The thing about summer is most students spend 7.5 hours a day on their multimedia devices, watching TV, playing their Xbox, doing various things. That's 75 hours every 10 days. They're spending all day. The study further went on to say, that they actually get 10 hours and 45 minutes of multimedia in because they're so good at multitasking. So they're spending half the day on their multimedia devices, sitting inside and sitting, not even running around outside, not even going to the beach or the pool. They're sitting, literally sitting. And the second sad thing about summer is that there's a thing called summer learning loss. When students go home for the summer, if they don't go and learn, they're actually learning decreases. They, they go, it goes backwards. It doesn't even stay the same. There's an actual summer learning loss if they don't focus on their education. Well, I have nothing against having fun. I love having fun. But there is a better way to spend our summer. There's a better way to spend that most summers, those 75 days, taking on a challenge the challenge of the most difficult topic that most students face. There are studies that show that students would rather take out the garbage and do anything other than doing their math homework. It's scary, but how can we help? At the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, we've taken on that challenge. Now, I know most of you are thinking Silicon Valley, you know, nerds rule. It's the place where you go and everyone is, is wealthy and there's all these great startups. Where could possibly be their need? There are actually two Silicon Valleys. There's one Silicon Valley up a highway called 280, where you will find the greatest nerds in the world, and they do rule. You will find the best and the brightest in the world, the billion dollar mile. And then there's a highway called 101 where you find the highest need kids, not only in the valley and perhaps the country. There are over 105,000 kids in a narrow 13-mile radius that live below the federal poverty level of $35,000 for a family of four. Yes, that is in Silicon Valley. And when we took on this challenge at the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, we said, how do we help the entire valley come up? And we developed a program called Elevate Math, which was 75 hours of instruction for rising eighth graders between their seventh and eighth grade 
These are kids who would not be qualified to take algebra in the eighth grade, who now take and pass algebra over a 75-hour period. That's in 19 days, four hours a day. We also worked with middle school math teachers, provided them 40 hours of training, because we know a math teacher, they may only teach 30 kids in the summer, but they teach 150 kids during the school year. There's an exponential return on that. And in these 75 hours, we've done some incredible things. Blended learning, introducing technology. The idea of differentiation. We're in a classic classroom. If you line up the 30 kids in the classroom from best to worst, the teacher will be teaching to number 16. Number one will be bored and number 30 will be lost. That's where technology can help. And actually putting that into play and having some predictability where a teacher sitting at their desk can predict when someone's going to raise their hand by looking at what they're doing on their computer. That's leveraging technology so all students can achieve. It also works with the parents of these students. I have yet to meet a parent who doesn't care about their child's education, but yet we need to provide them the right tools. And working with parents, particularly immigrant parents, of understanding the system and how it works. It's introducing them to college, to actually visit a college campus. Most kids who go to college have actually visited one before they go. There are some kids who are just not exposed to that experiment, to that experience, and seeing that. And that exposure leads to being able to visualize going there. And then inviting industry, inviting those great nerds that we talk about in Silicon Valley to the classroom so they can provide relevance. When am I ever going to use this differential equation in real life? That's where the relevance of the industry helps them understand. This is a program that is getting incredible results. Over 64% of these kids go on and take and pass algebra in the eighth grade, whereas before that summer, they weren't even qualified for algebra. And that's at a higher rate than the kids who are qualified to take algebra in the eighth grade. So they're beating the group that was qualified. And these weren't even, kids weren't even supposed to take algebra in the eighth grade. So it changes trajectory. And you go on to look at these kids. Now we've served over 10,000 of these students that they actually make it to algebra two and pass algebra two at an astonishing rate. And we see that trajectory because we built their confidence. We've removed misconceptions about math. And we've given them the time and leverage that summer, leverage that time when they, were, they would be sitting behind a computer playing games or doing all kinds of other things towards the most difficult subject that they've ever taken on. As a result of this, we've seen kids in those most difficult neighborhoods near Santee Elementary School, Fair Middle School in Silicon Valley, go on to the greatest universities in the world like UCLA. These kids, if you were to look at the correlation, would have never had a chance. But because they've mastered that subject of math, math has become the language of K kindergarten to 12th grade education. And algebra has become that barrier that, that most students need to overcome so they are prepared. After running this program for over five years now, we've realized, wait a minute. Algebra is the same in Silicon Valley as it is in Austin, as it is in New York, as it is in Chicago. And it's been the same thing for many, many, many years. And that's where we're taking this program called Elevate Math on the Road, sharing it with, with the country, and providing the opportunity for students across the country who need to be prepared for college and careers to be competitive, to have a chance to go to college, to have the opportunity to go to college, to overcome the most difficult hurdle, which is clearly algebra. And as we do this, we meet folks in various communities, leaders in communities, tutors in communities, students, high school students, college students, who are saying, I want my city to be competitive. I want my neighborhood to have all kids be prepared for a future that involves college and career readiness. And that's where we invite all of you to join us in preparing your neighborhood, preparing your city, by taking on a program like Elevate Math, 
and seeing those kids who are behind, and in 75 hours, you can truly change a life. Because that's what it did for me in third grade. And that's what it's doing for thousands of kids already. So join me and imagine a country where all students are prepared for college and careers. Thank you.